thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for 30 minutes of honest advice, tips and resources. I'm Trudy J and I'm here all on my own, well not completely on my own, but with none of the other Spa Girls today because of technical issues. But I do have, instead of the Spa Girls, the delightful, the wonderful Kerry Arthur. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for joining me here today in the spa. I'm sorry the others aren't here. We did try. <laughs> we didn't, but we didn't quite get there. So um, what I'm going to do, Kerry, is read out your bio, and then we'll get straight into the questions. Cool. So here we go. Kerry Arthur is the New York Times best-selling author of urban fantasy and paranormal romance novels. She began writing at the age of 12 and has more than 48 novels to date. Her books have received many nominations and prizes, including nods from the Romantic Times Reviewers' Choice Awards and PNR's Pearl Awards, and she has won RT's Career Achievement Award for Urban Fantasy. She currently lives in Melbourne, Australia, with her daughter. That all and correct? Dogs. And a dog? <laughs> How many dog. dogs? One dog? What's one dog? dog? One dog. He's a uh, wolfhound mastiff cross. Yes. I saw some photos. He's a big hairy thing, isn't he? Yeah, yes. yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my technical description of dogs for you. Yep. Big hairy dog that you've got. He looks lovely, by the way. <laughs> I am not being mean about your dogs. Um, so could you just give us a bit of a, that was the bio version of, yep. of your writing career, but can you just tell us how you got into writing and how long you've been doing it and that kind of thing? Yep. Um, well, I have been writing since I was 12 years old, but it wasn't until... Um, about 1990 that I got serious about it yeah. and decided I'm going to get published. Um, it took 10 years to get published and my first book, Dancing with the Devil, was published with a small US um, e-press and I had, I think, 13 or 14 books published with them and oh, then wow. um, I wrote the Riley Jensen series and got a traditional deal and things took off and yeah I've been writing ever since been lucky enough to um support myself writing too and yeah. my family yeah so yeah I've been, I've been really lucky in my career that's awesome yeah so um and so since so that was your big traditional deal with with the Riley Jensen series how now you're now doing self-publishing so when did that happen when did the when did you switch um, to the, the the light side of the force <laughs> I, I did my toe in about five years ago. I, I, I went through my uh, agent with one book yeah. and got frustrated that I couldn't um, change prices and, and stuff like that. So then I wrote um, Blood, Blood Kiss, the first of the Lizzie Grace series, and that was my first full step into self-publishing. Oh, nice. Um, and I really enjoyed the process, even though it was a massive learning curve. Yeah, coming yeah. from the traditional side. And then, of course, a year or so later, I lost both my contracts, my traditional contracts. Oh, wow. Well, I basically okay. had no choice but to self-publish. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so it was jumping in full body and going <laughs> straight at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's kind of cool then. That was That's kind of why, right? Like you want yeah. to have toes in all the, all the different yeah. pieces of water because you never know what's going to come up and what's going to happen. Well, that's it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I didn't think I'd lose it. I knew, you know, the advances and that would go down, but I thought mm. I had enough of a following to um, to keep getting contracts, traditional contracts. And ideally, yeah. I would have liked to have been a hybrid author, but mm. um, that wasn't to be. Yeah, so. okay. What are, what are the main differences between um, self-publishing and traditional publishing then for you, like who's seen both sides? Um, well... Self-publishing, you basically have to do it all yourself. Mm. You know, you've got to arrange your editors, you've got to arrange your copy editors, you've got to arrange your covers, you've got to arrange proofers, and yeah, yeah. You, it, everything is you. And yeah. um, from someone who came from an additional side where all that was done for you, it was whoa, <laughs> how am I going to cope with this? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you find that you've become a control freak now, and you can't you can't be the idea of someone else deciding on your cover, or is that just me? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> but when it comes to covers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I love the control of, you know, just getting what you want on the cover. And yeah. I, I love all my self published covers. So, and yeah. I've got a stack of them hidden away too, you know, <laughs> that I've bought with no story attached, but I just <laughs> love the cover and thought, yeah, I've got to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. Um, and because there's a lot of people out there who think, oh, I, I don't want to be self-published. I just want to go traditional because the traditional publishers will do everything for me. Yeah. And, and kind of what you're saying is that they'll do some of it. But do they do everything like people think? Or is it, did you still have to do stuff from well, your Well, these end? days you, you do have to do more in the marketing. Um, mm. And it, it does depend on the, the publisher too. Mm -hmm. uh, it, like the big five will do basically everything. Although these days they are putting more of the marketing stuff onto the authors. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the uh, small presses you have to do, I mean, they still do your editing and, and proofing that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, with the small press, you've got more say in your covers. Um, they'll ask for opinions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, basically you've got all the control of a um, self-published author. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all the stress as well. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so... Do you, this, this is an interesting question. Do you think, did you earn more money as a traditionally published author or self-published? Is that, or is that a hard um, question? I earned really good money in my trade career. Um, mm. I mean, with, uh, imagine the small press I was with initially, I didn't earn heaps, but I did, I did reasonably well considering it was in the 2000s and Kindle and all them weren't around at the time. So I was getting a couple of grand a month, mm. which is pretty good. For that yeah. Time. yeah but my trade career i mean my first contract was 120,000 a book wow okay so um <laughs> you know that's that's really good money <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but because of my trade career i've got the advantage over a lot of self published authors i've got the following mm. so i'm still earning good money yeah in my self published career because i've had the long trade career and i've got yeah. the readers behind me yeah, and you know, and they know you who you yeah, are and where you're yeah. from. They know my brand. They know they know what to expect if when I release a book, and I, you know, I do all the editing and the copy editing, and the proofing, and everything like that. So, um, yeah, so they know what to expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still you. It's still the same book. Do you think yeah. all readers even notice? Like that's what I'm curious about. Do you think they know even know that these books that are coming out from you are different to the ones that they always used to enjoy from? Um, probably not. I mean. It, those who are on my readers group page and that know I'm self-publishing now, but it, yeah. if someone's just came straight in and found my books and haven't yeah. known my past books, they, they probably wouldn't notice the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, Cause it's the yeah. same, same quality. It's the same yeah. person. You're the well, same. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what I aim for. The same quality. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so, okay. This is a hard question. Would you go back to being traditionally published if someone came to you with a contract? If they offered me tons and tons and tons of money, yeah, um, yeah. probably, but I wouldn't give up all rights. Um, yeah. And a lot of the publishers these days, when they come to successfully authors, they're, they're asking for multiple rights, and I, I wouldn't do that. I mean, yeah. I make good money publishing. Yeah. Um, if they wanted the print rights, fine. If they wanted the audio rights, fine, but no. Nah, mm. The rest yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. It's changed. Everything has sort of moved in a different way now. It's not the same as it was when in the two thousands when you started no. publishing. It's a yeah, yeah, it's a different environment. Yeah, it's totally different. And it's good that the authors now have that option. You know, if they want to go traditional, they can. Yeah. But if they don't want to, if they want to control it all themselves. The market's there, and the means is there, and it, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> so if you've got a new author who's starting out in their career what advice would you give them in terms of trad versus self-publishing could you or is it just too different? um well it's decide what you want in your career um you've got to remember trad publishers u.s trad publishers expect two books a year and that's all you'll probably get. Australia's mm. one book a year, maybe. Oh, wow. Um, so you, and in Australia, um, you generally won't be able to live off, off your writing earnings. Mm. Uh, the US, you can if you get a good enough deal. But these days, the good enough deals are really hard to, yeah. hard to find. But by the same token, uh, self-publishing, um, it's a long haul uh, game, you know, mm. you can't re release one or two or three books and think you're going to make a ton of money. You've got to be in it for, you know, five, six, seven, eight books these days, mm. three or four years before you start making very good money. Mm. Um, so you, you've got to look at it long term. Either way, you've got to look at it long term. Yeah. 
yeah either way it's it's not a, an easy choice right it, it, it's not an easy choice um you know and there's nothing wrong with doing one or the other it's yeah. just where you personally feel comfortable yeah you know, whether you, you don't particularly want all the hassle of you know the cop having to arrange the copy editing and the, the editing and the proofing and you just want to pass it all off onto the edit that's fine mm. but if you're a control freak or you just you just want to write your own stuff and put it out there then self publishing is a good option too so yeah. Yeah. just just decide where you want to sit and where you want to go and just aim for that and remember either way it's a long game mm. Yeah, no, well, that's good advice. Thank you. Mm. Um, so you write urban fantasy. Well, you started out in paranormal romance. Is that kind of? I started out in paranormal romance, and then I sort of veered towards urban. If you read my paranormal romances, they tend to have a lot of the urban fantasy elements anyway. So mm. yeah, I just I just naturally veered towards the the urban yeah. fantasy because I love because, series. So yeah, you love writing in series. So we'll talk I about love that in a writing in series. So in your definition, what is the difference between paranormal romance and urban fantasy? Paranormal romance is, it follows the convention of ordinary romances. The romance is front and centre. It's the mm. main plot line. Whereas yeah. urban fantasy, the romance is a secondary plot line. It's yeah. the action and the, you know, that's the main plot. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Bad guys, finding bad guys, kicking the bad guys, but that, that's the main plot in an urban fantasy. Does it have to be in an urban setting? No. Um, my Lizzie Grace series is set in a country town. Yeah. So yeah, so it's just yeah, it's just a modern day setting. Whether that's country or main city, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's just a modern setting. I've heard it called contemporary fantasy, and in some ways, I feel like that would be a more accurate description. But urban fantasy sounds cooler. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lot. Yeah. No, it's a long name though it's um a name that's been around for a long time whereas contemporary fantasy i think a lot of people would think more of the um contemporary elements like dragons and stuff like that whereas urban yeah. fantasy tend not to have a lot of dragons yeah and you know the more traditional um fantasy elements yeah okay that makes sense um and so when you're writing these books and you're what is it do you think draws people into your books how do you make sure that your readers are going to love your books um, it's all about characters. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. No matter what book you're writing, no matter what genre you're writing, you've got to write characters that your, your readers love. Yeah. If they don't like your main character, and for me it's more important they like it because I write in first person. Yeah. So if they don't like my main character, I'm in deep trouble. They won't read the book. Yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, you've just got to create characters that they love, that they'll follow through yeah. the journey, in my case, in, through multiple books. Yeah. So how do you make sure that? Like, how do you create a character that people are going to love? Um, is it about giving them well, quirks? They can't, they can't be perfect. Yeah. You know, they've got to have the good points. They've got to have the bad points. Um, they've, they've got to be got to be human, even if they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. They've got to be real. Yeah. No, that's yeah. perfect. Um, and so what do you think about the urban fantasy um, as a genre these days like where is it at and has it changed over the last few years or is it just the same as it's uh, it always comes through you know like vampires a few years ago you couldn't sell a vampire to save your life mm. but now vampires are starting to come back yeah. um you know werewolves have always been popular uh, witches are, are very very popular at the moment so just Urban fantasy is a genre you can do anything, basically, mm. uh, and the readers are out there for it if you're self-published. Yeah. It's harder to sell to um, traditional publishers at the moment. Uh, they're just not looking. According mm. to them, urban fantasy doesn't sell, okay. um, which, you know, if you go to the self-publishing <laughs> model, hell yeah, it sells. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, it's like that with lots of different genres in self-publishing where the traditional publishers are saying, oh, no, we can't sell it. And then it's, you go check out the self-publishing um, yeah. market and, and they're all there. Yeah, they're all being sold yeah. and the readers are there for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what... Um, do you have a newsletter? Do you you mentioned a readers group before? Like, what do you do to kind of connect with your readers? Um, I've got a couple of Facebook pages and Twitter. Um, my readers group, Kerry Arthur's readers group. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I'm giving away a book a week. Just you know, oh wow, yeah. So that 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 drags in um, readers, and we talk about books and 
my readers have conversations about books and different characters and, and it's just it's a good way of uh, interacting with your reader base yeah um, are they very interactive like they'll post things or yeah yeah they'll yeah. post things and, and 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 stuff like that so yeah so it's really good yeah uh, it, it's just a good way of a group is a good way of interacting the pages these days the way Facebook has changed the algorithms pages aren't working as well as groups at the moment mm, yeah. so it's always good um, to set up a, 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 a group mm. just to interact with your readers yeah 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 because pages tend to almost be one-dimensional whereas the group is a, a little bit more options around and yeah can... well the pages too I mean because of Facebook's algorithms you know you may get one or two percent of people seeing like I've, on my page, I've got 20,000 people, uh, 27,000 people. Wow. Okay. Who, who have liked my page. 1% of those people see my posts. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Whereas I'm in my group, which I'm just building, I've only had it for a year and a half, I think. There's yeah. 1,800 or something people on there. Most yeah. of the people in that group will see the posts. Yeah. So that's, that's you know, a huge difference. Yeah. Eighteen hundred in a group is pretty pretty good. Well, yeah, yeah. When I compare it to other groups that I'm in, for yes, you know, yeah. with this, it's not nothing to be sneezed at. You sounded like you were trying to say that it wasn't very much. No, 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 no. I know, I know, but it, it, it's slowly building. That's the thing, yeah. and, and yeah. you know, that's what you've got to do. Yeah, slowly yeah. build these things. Yeah, exactly. Um, and oh, are you KU or wide? Uh, wide. Wide. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Would you ever well, consider you KU? Can. I'm yeah. not a huge fan of KU. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people make good money in it, but I just don't like the way Amazon treats authors and the way they don't hit down on scammers in KU. There yeah. are a ton of scammers in K KU and it's affecting the earnings of the majority of the people in there. Mm. I mean, people yeah. do make good money in KU, but it's just, yeah, yeah go wide. Go wide. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, <laughs> and you can do cool things like give away a book a week. Apparently, well, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> do you? Are you? When you say you give away a book a week, are you doing it to drive sales or just to be kind to your readers or? Uh, just the... to be kind. I, I started it when the whole COVID thing started. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. Just you know, just something to give back to readers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll just keep doing it probably till the end of the year at this stage. Yeah. Because it's, it's most of my readers are in the US and the US is in a bad way at the moment. So um, I just thought, ah, I just do yeah. something to give back to the readers. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. That's really lovely. Yeah. So anyone listening, go and join Kerry's <laughs> <laughs> group, add to the 1800 and get some free books. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and so do you do advertising? What advertising do you do? Yeah. I'm really bad at advertising. <laughs> I know I should do more about it and I've joined up on various courses that I haven't yet done. Yeah. Um, I've got a newsletter and that's about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Is your, is your newsletter with similar numbers to your Facebook page or group? Uh, or? I think there's 7,000. Okay. Odd that's pretty good. Subscribers. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm really bad at advertising. I should do it more, but you yeah, know, just... it's not, well, I mean, if you, what you've got is working, like you're still getting the, yeah. a decent income from what you've got, then, yeah. you know, although I don't like to mention this, but you know, imagine what it could be if you, oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but better, just, um, I look at all those, all the things you have to learn with the whole advertising thing and I think, oh, I can't be bothered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's kind of good for us to see someone who's doing really well without that. So, yay. Yeah. <laughs> because well, everyone... yeah, but again, it comes back. I'm doing well because I've got the past readership. Mm. You know, if I didn't have that past readership, then I'd, I'd be in trouble. I, I would have to advertise. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's cool. Do you do any, like, the newsletter promos? Like, the have you tried for a book bub or not even? No, uh, well, I haven't tried for a book bub. I do Kobo promos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I scan through and, and, and do a couple of those a year. Mm. just depends what it is. Um, but that's about it, really. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon. Uh, Amazon regularly send me um, promo stuff, a deal of the day and stuff like that. I will do those. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so... Oh, that's awesome. That's about it, really. <laughs> so do you have any tips in terms of how you, do you do anything special on the different platforms like Kobo and um, Barnes & Noble or, um, or Apple, Apple Books? I forget what it's called these days. No, um, I've done a few deals on Apple Books, but they're really hard to get. 
Mm. You've got the apples basically got to come to you. Um, yeah, no, I don't treat any of the platforms any different. I've just got all the links everywhere, you know, on my website and in my book and uh, my newsletter and stuff like that. Um, in the back of my book, e-books, I've got all the links there. Um, mm. That's that's it. I'm really bad to, <laughs> to ask about advertising and stuff like that. Cause I don't know. Right, I'll move on. I'll move on. So what about, so, and how does it work in terms of you've got your traditionally published books that are still up? Do yeah. they put links for you in the back to things like your newsletter or <laughs> no? No, no. According to the traditional publishers, it's too hard to do. You uh, know? Yeah. <laughs> it takes all five minutes. Yeah. Five seconds, rather. Oh, but yeah, no, no. Apparently it's too hard to do that. Okay. With traditional publishers. Okay. So you've got it all in the back of your um, self published books. Published though, books, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all the direct links. And it's, you know, with Vellum, love Vellum. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't take five minutes. Yeah. So. So let's talk about that. Like, so what was the hardest thing that, that you found when you switched to self-publishing? You said there was a really steep learning curve. So things like figuring out Vellum, was that hard or Actually, easy? Actually, Vellum was relatively easy. The hardest thing was learning all the platforms, how to load books up onto all the platforms. Yeah. Apple drove me insane. Yeah. You know, it's, I, now that I understand how it works, it's really easy to use. But the iBooks platform initially... It took a lot of cursing and swearing and, you know, <laughs> and, and having to fill in the various tax forms. You know, you can't use the same tax form for mm. each of the ones. You've got to do a different one for all of them. And it's, yeah, it was all that sort of stuff. Yeah. The technical yeah. stuff. Yeah. Just that um, introduction bit, you know, when you first start out. And you didn't, you, was draft to digital around when you first started yes, or you decided yes, to not? Yeah, they were really easy. Draft yeah. to digital is really easy to use. If you don't mind uh, losing an extra 10%, then, you know, just put it all onto draft to digital and, and go from there. Um, yeah. But at the time, the, the draft to digital was the only way you could load onto Nook mm. if you're outside uh, America. Yeah. So that's what I did. It. So I, used, I still use them for Nook and all the other smaller library places and stuff like that. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. What else? What were the other? Th I'm just curious. It's been a while now since I started first started. And I, what other things were kind of difficult or easy or uh, finding um, editors and copy editors? That was really hard. Um, mm. Just just finding those editors that I was comfortable with and who knew my genre and, and stuff like that. That that mm. that took a while. Um, searching around for good cover artists. I mean, that was great fun, but it, <laughs> it took a lot of time to find, you know, yeah. the cover artists I, I was happy with. Um, what, what would you recommend to do that? How did you sort of, did you just search around? I just searched covers? around. Uh, um, Facebook has a couple of um, pages now, groups that actually where the, the cover artists go on and show their wares. Mm. Um, I can't remember them, but I, I, I can send you the links. Yeah, put yeah it under. we'll put the yeah, links but in the there's, show notes. They've got, you know, like a hundred different cover artists who go on to these pages and show you, you know, their latest covers and pre-mades and stuff like that. Mm. And that's ha actually how I found three of my uh, cover artists. Really, really good. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's cool. The easiest way. So what about covers in, in urban fantasy? That's I'm really curious about that. Like, so you obviously are steeped in the knowledge of the urban fantasy <laughs> genre. Um, what what do you think is sort of the elements of a cover for urban fantasy that maybe the urban right? fantasy is the the chick ass uh, kick ass chick basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, paranormal romance you ha usually have cu couples yeah. kick ass couples, yeah. but in in urban fantasy it's the chick on the cover, uh, leather jeans, singlets weapon <laughs> looking yeah. fierce yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> magic or you know whatever yeah yeah, yeah. no that's it exactly awesome <laughs> good i'm glad that describes my cover i think so, yeah, yeah good. um so so how what about like I'm, I'm switching all over the place here but let's go let's go back to the newsletter so how often do you send it and what kind of content are you sending them and how do you run it the what? Sorry, the newsletter. The newsletter. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, I'm really bad at the newsletter too. <laughs> I send I'm it. I'm sure when you're not. Something. I'm sure you're I'm, not. Well, I don't send it as often probably as I should. I send it every couple of months. So when I've got a new cover or um, a pre-order goes up, 
or you know there's a release about to, I've got a release coming out Tuesday so I'll probably send a newsletter out this weekend just to re, to remind people mm. um, but usually if I've got something to say I'll send it out if I haven't I won't okay. so it's you know it could be every two months or so when is I send that, a newsletter out is that how often you're publishing at the moment every two months no no I'm publishing every three months so I well three and a half. I put out three books a year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's comfortable for me. Yeah. So. And so, what do you? So, can you talk talk to me through a little bit of your processes? Then I'd love to find out. So, how long it takes you to write the draft, and is it? You know, um, what, what are you doing? I write five days a week, um, roughly somewhere between a thousand to twelve hundred words a day. Mm -hmm. um, I write every afternoon because I've got to take a dog for a walk in the morning. Otherwise, he'll <laughs> eat the house. Um, <laughs> I write, it's important yeah. not to have the dog eat the house. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> He's a big dog, so, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I write every um, afternoon and I do, you know, stuff like editing or, you know, copy editing or whatever in the weekend or I'll use the weekends to catch up if I'm behind. Mm -hmm. I usually get a book done every three months. Yeah. So then I'll, I, I'll go run through it myself, do an edit then, and then I'll send it off to my, you know, editor and copy editor and everything like after that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm comfortably writing three books a year. Mm. I, I could do four, but it's just too much stress. I can't be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing running through everything here. <laughs> You've got a forty-eight book backlist here as well. well like, yes. do you do? Can I? I can't remember if we talked about this, but how many of those are um, uh, self-published and how many are trade? Um, I think thirty-five or thirty-six or something like that. Uh, I have to um, go back and count, but yes, yeah, yeah. mid thirties is is traditional. Yeah, and the, and so do they just sort of spin along in the background and the, and they yeah they, they, they just trundle, and... trundle along. I will never get those rights back. Um, mm. Only well, the Riley Jensen series, the first five are now earned down, but the rest, the other four, haven't. And I don't know if they will because the market's shifted at the moment. Mm. So, um, but that's all right. I've got a lot of money for them, so yeah. I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you? <laughs> and, you know, you're not allowed to write in that series anymore, are you? Obviously. No. Like, well, so if I wrote in that series, I'd have to give the publisher first option to buy. Okay. Yeah. That's in the contract. So. Yeah. 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 Would you consider going back? To the um, well, do you miss her? Do you miss Riley? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I mean, I ended the series. The publisher did not want me to end that series. They were actually okay. pressing me to do more books, but it got to the stage with the ninth book. I thought, I can't take this anywhere else without just stretching it for the sake of stretching it. Mm. You know, the ninth book had the logical end. And for me, I'd rather end a series logically in a good point, at a good point, without, you know, just writing for the sake of writing and have readers fall away mm. with disinterest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, end on a high note, right? Yeah, like, exactly. You know, yeah. Like when a television series ends on a high note, you're, yeah, it's much yeah. better than... Yeah, you'll always want more, but it's better to end on a high yeah. rather than a low and just drag yeah. it out. Okay. Um, and so... So talking about that, we talked a little bit before we came on air about series and what you do. I think it was before we came on air. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and you, because I said to you, I'm terrible at series and remembering what I've written previously. And you gave me some really good advice. What was that? <laughs> to copy and paste. Yes. <laughs> uh, what I do is I have, well, basically three files open. I've got my book file and then I've got a world building file and then I've got a character file. So mm -hmm. every time I write something in my story that's either world building based or character based, I just copy and paste. Nice. So it's all in the one file. Whenever instead of having to read back four or five books to find that nugget of information I know is there somewhere, mm. I've only got to have to have to go to the, the world building file or the character file and it's all there. Mm. So maybe a bit messy, but at least <laughs> I've only got to go through, you know, three or four pages rather than mm. three or four books. So do you do you keep that same um, like character file for that the main character, and then when you go to the next book, you you have that same file open, and yeah, yeah. So, same information, yeah, yeah. so you keep it running. If it's a seven book series or eight book series, it's the one file for the mm. entire series. Yeah, 
Okay. So, you know, and, you know, if I add something in book six to, you know, one of the characters from book one, I'll put it in the file so that it's there for the, the, the next book so I don't forget. Yeah. It's all yeah. about the forgetting. I don't know why, but it all just... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. This much. is why I do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I just... You just... I've got so many series that... Um, I do get characters mixed up occasionally, so I have to go back and think, no, no, that that, that character didn't do that, and then I have to go to my files yeah. and check what I've written. Oh, yeah. my goodness. You're, you're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, like, two main characters, and it's bad enough with two of them, let alone more. Oh. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to start doing that from now on. Awesome. Thank you for that. So is, is there any other pieces of advice around writing in series that you would give someone? Like, should you write a certain number of books before you – um, publish anything? I mean, I so you know what's going to happen and you can make sure that there's nuggets in book one is kind of what I'm thinking, but... Um, well, I'm a pantser, so I'm really bad to ask Oh, about no, them. you're one of them. Oh, <laughs> oh one of them, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All my series have been pantsed. <laughs> wow, okay. So tell us about pantsing. Let me, let me hear. Um, well, pantsing, you've got to be prepared to go off on tangents, realise it's not working, and come back. Um, I've... I, I've gotten better at it because uh, I've got so many books behind me. So, you know, I've I sort of fallen into to a reasonable pattern of writing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it, it's it's fun. I love it. <laughs> you know? oh, you're giving me no, the... No, no, half the fun of writing for me is not knowing where, where the story's going. Yeah, yeah. You know, do you I, have any idea? Like when you start, you yeah. kind of go, do you start with a character or how do you start? I start with a character in a situation. Um, and I generally know how the series is going to end. Mm. Um, I, might, I might not know how many books it is or, you know, anything like that. But I always know, like for the Riley Jensen series, I knew how that series was going to end and who she was going to end up with from the very mm. beginning. Yeah. It was, just, it was just the journey to get there to that there. I had no clue about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so, yeah. If and you're a pantser, you've just got to go with the trust your instinct write the book, and then go back and edit. Yeah. <laughs> it's the going back, right? So yeah, do yeah. you still kind of know, okay, I've got to do a black moment, or I know that at a certain point something wants to happen, or do you just write it out and then and then it's the editing process that is the... Um, I write it out, but I'm always conscious of, um, it, well, for a start, ending chapters with a hook. Mm. So, you know, if, if I think a chapter's going too long... I'll go back and look, well, where's, where's the logical hook of this chapter? And mm -hmm. then I'll end it and start on. So I always okay. end it or try to end the chapter with a hook. And I'm always conscious of the rise and fall. Mm -hmm. So if you have an action scene, you've got to have an after action scene where the characters can take a breath. And yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's sort of, it's a, it's a natural rhythm you get into mm -hmm. once you've written a, a few books. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you've just, I'm conscious, I am conscious of where uh, and aware of, you know, the flow of the story. Mm -hmm. And if I think it's going too long, then I'll go back and either delete or change direction or stuff like that. How do you differentiate from the overall arc of the series and then the arc in the story? Do you, do you know the, so you only um, kind I of don't know. Always, I don't always know the overall arc. Uh, like the Riley Jensen series, the first three books had an arc and then it was sort of individual. Each book was an individual story in over her, the overall arc was just her search for the, her soulmate, basically. Mm. And who I, think there's some, I think there's some birds being killed outside your window. <laughs> no, no, that's my magpies oh waiting my for their breakfast. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it's it's so they were... They're actually standing at my window, staring at my window, singing at me. <laughs> and you <laughs> feed them? Oh, my God. Do you feed them every day like that? Every day, your... yes. They get mints oh. every day. Oh, nice. They'll be happy. No wonder they're there waiting for you. They're like, what is she doing? <laughs> Mucking around. Why are you sorry. <laughs> sorry, magpies. I've got to for a bit longer. <laughs> sorry there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, now I'm completely distracted. I have no idea what I was talking about. Um, so what else? 
so okay so you're pantsing away so i want to tell you that wendy is a pantser one of the other spa girls and she would have yep. been happy to be here unfortunately they didn't get on um and, she, and you and her could have bonded over that whereas yep. i'm a total plotter um so oh, I like no. to, see yeah. if I, i've tried to plot and it's killed the story for me yeah yeah once i know where it's absolutely where it's going yeah then, well the story's told why do i need to tell this story yeah isn't that funny <laughs> Whereas I get blocked if I don't, yeah, anyway. So, okay, well, if I get it? blocked, I kill someone, basically. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> Not always kill, kill, but, you know, what I do, if I get blocked, I either do murder someone in the book or I, I look at the worst possible thing that can happen for these characters at that point of time yeah. and do that. Oh, that's such so, good yeah. advice. And yet yeah, so yeah. scary, right? Like you're riding yeah. along and suddenly you know it would be really bad if they all... Yeah, yeah. No. they all blown up by a nuclear. Exp no, that would be bad. Don't do that. Um, so, what what are the elements that you have to have in an urban fantasy? Say, like, look. so we've got the um, kick-ass heroine. What else do we need? Well, it's such a wild field, wide field that you can basically have anything you want. You know, you generally got to have your supernatural creatures. They're expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether, you know, that's a hero or the bad guy or, or what. It, you've generally also got to have a lot of action. Mm -hmm. um, uh, have you studied fight scenes are you like a karate expert no i'm not a karate <laughs> but i do watch a lot of action movies okay yes. um and i i get around the whole action thing by having my my heroines not professional fighters or anything like that so yeah. um but you know I've, I've got books on on fighting and and trauma i've got some really good trauma books and stuff like that and, <laughs> oh my, uh, my books can get a bit gory at times yeah um yeah do you so think, I, do you I, think I, that's I, expected in in uf the gore like or dark urban not? fantasy is dark it, yeah. and they do expect in particularly in the dark urban fantasy um gore mm. horror elements mm. that's why it's called the dark dark urban because you, they, would you call your books dark urban or just a lot of my books are dark urban yes yeah okay. my lizzie grace is is uh urban fantasy because the, yeah. there's gore there but it's a lot lighter in tone than say the um lizzie grace series and yeah. um riley jensen series mm -hmm. which was dark urban fantasy because it got pretty grim in places mm -hmm. okay so that's interesting but yeah because there are the different like and there's an urban fantasy there's also the guy heroine versus the female heroine you get like the um shane silvers and and jim butcher and, and those kind of ones yeah who about, Sorry, about the magpies are now knocking on the window that's <laughs> <laughs> all right we're finishing soon magpies oh my god <laughs> just ignore them they have to learn politeness yes <laughs> Oh my God. Well, we're lucky that my dog isn't like banging at the cat door or something like that. So, you know, <laughs> animals everywhere around here. Um, yeah, so so it's there's, there's that kind of definition between the men and the, the male and the female urban fantasy. Um, but there's also like the dark and the and the more the yes. lighter version. Yeah, is it there's a lot of snarky heroines, would you say? Is that kind yeah, of yeah, there is snarkiness is can be a trait in the urban fantasy. Um, I uh, I prefer my heroines to be a bit more likable. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, they can be snarky, but they've got reasons to be snarky. So, okay. so that's uh, yeah. But uh, and I also like a bit of humour mm. stories, just to you know give a bit of light and shade between the, the darkness of the the story and the action. Mm. But you know, to yeah, just give a bit of relief to the story. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Um, and so, do you do other things? Like, do you have a community of authors that you spend time with, or other? Yeah, I have um, a critique critique group. Um, mm. We've been together for years <laughs> twenty twenty odd years. Oh wow! Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so, are you all Australian authors in your area? Yes, all or? Australian authors. We meet once a month face to face. Well, we can't at the moment, unfortunately. We're meeting online at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got that. And then I've got a couple of um, other groups um, members with, and we get together when we can, mm. uh, you know, once or twice a month mm. and just chat about the business and, and yeah. stuff like that. I think it's very important mm. because um, writing is in itself such a, a lonely business you know you're yeah. stuck in your room in front of a computer all day i think you need the contact with other writers i think yeah. it's very very important and mm -hmm. and 
particularly, you know, a smaller group of writers that you can trust to talk about your, your story and your problems you're having with it and, you know, work, work things out and help yeah. each other on the journey. Um, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, so. totally. No, that's very true. Very true. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so do you sell most of your books in the US, would you say? Like, what's the Australian market like for... Uh, um... I've, got, I've got a good Australian following, but most of my earnings does come from the US. I mean, mm. Amazon's my biggest market by far, yeah. 70% yeah. of my earnings. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to work on the other 30%. <laughs> It'd be nice you... if the other 30%, were, were, you know, yeah. started creeping up. But Do you do much in the way of print sales or is it mostly e-books? Oh, no, I get... I, well, my... The majority, I would say, eighty percent is ebook. Yeah. But I still like I'm earning a couple of thousand a month on print sales. Wow, that's good. So, well, and again, that comes from my trad. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of my trad readers are print readers. Yeah, sure. So you know, I so do that, sell a lot of print books because of that. That's an interesting kind of um, output from having that trad to self-publishing yeah. kind of background. It's like you get those readers that yeah. maybe yeah. someone who'd started out as a self-publisher wouldn't be able to to find them almost. Yes. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. yeah. 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 I, yeah. Again, that comes the advantage of having a trad career. You know, yeah. I, I pull my readers through in the print because yeah. you know, they used they used to be able to walk into a bookstore and get my books. Now mm -hmm. they have to go online to get my books, but they're still yeah. preferring the print. Yeah. Although a lot of them will buy the um, the ebook as well, which is interesting. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. Yeah, um, and it's interesting that there's the um, so you've got these traditional. So there's two different markets almost. Like you, it yeah. really is. There are different people buying these traditional books in the bookstores at the. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. fascinating, isn't it? That's um, why I recommend to new authors that they always have the option of the print there. Mm. You know, it, you may not make a lot of sales, but you are missing out on readers if you don't have the option there. Mm. Um, yeah. And it's not that much harder to... to no, no. I mean, it's, it's Ingrams. Just put it up on Ingrams and there's, yeah. you know, it'll go worldwide and um, there's always codes to get around mm. the Ingrams fees. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's, definitely. It's not hard work to do. It doesn't add in, yeah, and then it's there and you've got it and it's, yeah. yeah. And are you in libraries as well, like through Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, now, I think I've asked you all the very nosy questions I had for you <laughs> today, <laughs> but just, just in terms of just a general kind of piece of advice for authors out there um, thinking either urban fantasy or just general authors, what would you say is the most important thing about publishing? Um, or? Taking your time. And enjoying what you're writing. Mm. Uh, don't be in a rush to get published. Yeah. Um, remember, quality will sell over volume every time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just enjoy what you write. Don't follow market trends because you know by the time you get your book, book out, the market trend might be gone. Just love what you write. Yeah. I've been in this business now for 20 years. Uh, I've never followed market trends. I've always written whatever the hell I want. Yeah. And um, sometimes it sold. In the early days, it didn't sell. But in, in the, um, you know, in the mid-2000s when I sold the Riley Jensen series, um, the publishers weren't looking for that type of story because it was so cross-genre. Mm. Uh, but the reason I had three publishers uh, vying for that book was because there was nothing else there out there like it at the time. You know, it yeah. was it was a total mix of everything. So that's the reason why I got an auction because you know it was different. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just write what you love, even if you know that there's no market, so-called market for it at the time. You know, you will find readers. Yeah. And if you want a long-term career in this business, you've got to write what you love. Mm. It's the only way to survive. Yeah. Yep, that is good advice. If yeah. you want to survive, if you want to do it long term, you've got to love it, right? Yeah, exactly. You've got yeah. to love what you're doing. Because, you know, with this business, there will come times when it feels like you're falling down a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, we're painting such a wonderful picture of writing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I do. I love what I do. But, yeah. you know, it's just sometimes you think, oh, my God, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there have been times that have been very stressful. I mean, when I first lost my contract, because I've lost um, 
contracts a number of times, but the yeah. first time it happened was when um, I think Bantam, uh, Random House Bantam, got merged into another Ballantyne, I think it was, and they got rid of something like 400 authors. Wow. And I lost my contracts then, and it was you know, a few months of stress trying to, to get another publisher. Yeah. Because at the time, I mean, self-publishing wasn't really an option when that happened. Mm. So, you know, and then it all happened again when Penguin and Random House merged and NAL went under. Um, mm. You know, yeah. and I was shoved over to, to um, Berkeley, I think it was, who really couldn't handle dark urban fantasy. And no. I lost my contract. Not known. <laughs> you know, so, oh, yeah. So, yeah. You've got to expect the ups and downs. You've got to be tenacious in this business. Yeah, tenacious. That's such a great word. I think that's a that's a an amazing way to look at it. Because even self publishing, you have to be tenacious. Oh, you. Yeah. you can't yeah. you can't be someone who kind of gives up at the first hurdle because there are lots of no. hurdles. No, and I think yeah. Anywhere you look in writing, there are hurdles. It, well, that's from, it. You know, from writing the book to publishing the book to marketing yeah. it. Yeah. And, and for self publishing, it's finding the readers. You know, mm. you've just got to keep trying you're to hit the hit the marketing and keep putting out books and you know looking at the covers trying to get the right covers for your genre and if one cover's not working try another and it's mm. just you know keep going keep going don't give up yeah because <laughs> yeah. you, you will you will succeed in the end but you've just got to keep going yeah yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome advice. And I think that's a fantastic place to end. So um, if someone wants to go and read one of your books, what's the best place to find you, Kerry? Uh, probably on my website. It, it lists all, all the uh, the books. So www.kerryarthur.com. And that's Kerry spelled K-E-R-I. Uh, I, yeah. And Arthur.com. Yeah. Awesome. And we can be found, the Spa Girls, on www.spargirlspodcast.com. We're also on Facebook. We're probably on Twitter. I don't normally go on Twitter, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, we are. We are on Twitter. I do know. I just don't go there. Um, <laughs> and we would love you to come and find us on Facebook and say hi and tell us about the podcast and or what you want to hear about, anything like that. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Kerry, for coming on. I've really enjoyed it. I like chatting to other authors in my genre, particularly. Um, <laughs> And we will be back again next week with another podcast. But in the meantime, thank you all for listening and fare thee well. Bye. <laughs> Bye.